Joining me now with their invaluable insights are Michael Isakoff. He's seen a war or two. He's the chief investigative correspondent for Yahoo News. He's the author of Russian Roulette, the inside story of Putin's war on America and the election of Donald Trump. And I'm also pleased to welcome Mark McKinnon, former advisor to George W. Bush and John McCain. He's co-host of the Showtime series, The Circus, which is must-see TV without question. Okay, you two, I'm going to start with you, Michael. Um, that Those images today of that hospital and those pregnant women, uh, the ones who live, you know, and, and we don't know if others didn't. We're still looking for, you know, uh, survivors, hopefully under the rubble. There are protocols in war. And the way it works, I don't have to tell you, is that the UN provides warring parties the coordinates where hospitals are. And those are off limits. That's just the way the game is played. But it seems that Putin has decided to take that intelligence, take those coordinates, and use them like he did in Chechnya, like he did in Syria. I want to get you to uh, tell me what you think, Michael, his messages with today's handiwork, while we look at some other before and after pictures of other pieces of Putin's handiwork um, as the shells have rained down all over um, some of the cities there, and in particular Mariupol. Look, this is the first war in world history in which war crimes are being shown every day and night on world TV and on social media. So we are seeing it in real time. And I think that changes the calculus on how, what to make of what is what the Russians are doing right now, because um, the U.S. has, as you've pointed out, you know, drawn this line about not getting directly involved in kinetic action with the Russian military because of the risk that that could lead to a nuclear war or a war with a nuclear power. Um, but the the moral pressure to do something when we are seeing war crimes being committed in, on right in front of us, watching it constantly on TV, on social media. I think that's make, gonna make, the for the long term, uh, gonna make it really difficult to stick to the current US position because as the Russians continue these atrocities, um, we're all gonna see them we're all going to hear the pleas of the Ukrainians for assistance, and it's really hard to see how we stick to the current posture uh, in light of that. Yeah, just looking at those before and after pictures, it really does just, I mean, you, you start to feel like the, the, the war detritus is, is you know, um, wallpaper. It just keeps coming over and over, and, and one disaster area starts to look like the next until you see the comparisons, those those before and after pictures, and then you see, the, you know, a hospital. Okay, right. so Mark, I want to um, show a few things here. Uh, number one, there's a, a new poll that was conducted by News Nation, you know, basically taking the temperature of Americans with regard to providing weapons to Ukraine versus uh, the economic sanctions against Russia. And maybe these numbers aren't um, unsurprising. 73% of Americans favor sending weapons to help the Ukrainians. 65% favor the economic sanctions, even if it makes it more expensive for us. And just coupled with that, I want to play something that John Kirby said today in his Pentagon briefing about certain kinds of weapons, particularly jet fighters. I mean, it's just a no-go for him to help the Poles, you know, get those MiG-29s to Germany and then into Ukraine. And this is how he phrased it. Have a listen. Polish generosity is clearly on display for the whole world to see. But at this time, we believe the provision of additional fighter aircraft provides little increased capabilities at high risk. We also believe that there are alternative options that are much better suited to support the Ukrainian military in their fight against Russia. And we will continue to pursue those options. So, Mark, with the way um, John Kirby was talking, um, I'm kind of surprised at the poll numbers that they're so high and that people are prepared to pay these, you know, high prices for gas. We're weak, you know, one. How long do you think those numbers will actually stay high for Americans, um, you know, stomaching this? Well, Ashley, the other famous Vladimir Lenin, that is, said that there are 
decades where nothing happens and weeks where decades happen. And these last two weeks have seemed like that. Uh, I don't think that, that the, the Pentagon position is sustainable at all. Uh, I think there's enormous pressure. And by the way, it's bipartisan pressure uh, is, is strongly advocating a, a stronger position, and, and particularly in wake of the hospital bombings. Um, I, I just think it, it's a reality the administration is going to have to face sooner rather than later. I talked to Mitt Romney today, and he had a great point, which is to say, you know, if NATO is going to be effective, Putin has to be as afraid of NATO as NATO is afraid of Putin. And, and unless, I mean, the unless they're willing to consider ratcheting up the engagement, then Putin's going to continue is indiscriminate bombings of civilian targets. So there's another uh, series, and there's a great you know map to look at. All that blue there beside the big blue ocean, all the light blue, that's NATO, uh, next to Russia and little old Ukraine, you know, right in the middle. So if you're looking at it from Putin's perspective, he's looking at, you know, one big conglomerate next to him um, that that you know walks in lockstep. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.